So, um, <clears throat> my name is XX Swag Pussy Slayer X69420. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some of the stuff I was talking about. Um, so yeah, the, the this video is going to be talking about kind of like decentralized VPNs. Um, I was reading a little bit about them, and it's kind of like a like a weird area. Like it seemed like some people, like some of them are kind of people are still interested in them. Um, some of the projects. Um, I don't know if you've heard of stuff like Tachyon, and there's also ones like um, Mysterium, Orchid. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about how these services work. Um, so I think at least from my understanding, the basic idea of like a decentralized VPN is that I guess each computer would connect to um, their network or the network of uh, whoever's making the decentralized VPN. And then each user gives away like a certain percent of bandwidth. Is, is that... Is that, you think, a decent explanation? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a decentralized one would be like Tachyon, like you said, where mm -hmm. you donate a little bit and there's no overall control, um, but the nodes still understand how to talk to each other and then they can't be forked. Some of them just die off because someone will create a, uh, a piece of uh, a node that's essentially malicious and then yeah. hijacks the network. Um, so you do need a little bit of centralization where you have mechanisms where like the developers can release a new version that may patch some security vulnerabilities and then everyone would have to update to that version so there has to be some centralization aspects but um most of it can be decentralized like the connection algorithms like in like tor uh for tor uh there's not a central entity telling you which nodes, which middle relays, which entry relays, and then uh, which exit relays to use. But if an exit node essentially starts uh, messing with people's traffic, they can still blacklist it from the network. It's just a more roundabout process. Right. So like Tor is like a decentralized kind of thing. And there are like these decentralized VPNs. Um, I guess some of these like decentralized VPNs, Tachyon or whatever, um, I guess they're claiming that, I, I don't know, like they might be faster or they might, um, like, I guess that's like the only real reason, like why you'd want to use, if it's like maybe faster than I, I guess Tor, but like the problem I think with that is like kind of what you're saying is that, um, you know, the, the speed of these networks kind of depends also like on, um, you know, how many servers and how many people are using it, right? So if it's just exactly. very small, it's not going to be very... Think of it this way. Um, sometimes when you're doing VPN speed tests, you'll use a server that's physically close to you, and it may have kind of a sucky connection, and then you might use a server that might be far away that you have a better connection to. Mm -hmm. um, a VPN that has lots and lots of servers that automatically routes your internet through uh, the least congested path sometimes can be faster, than a VPN that routes you to a data center halfway across the country and then sends you back um, to your to like a game server or a website that's on the other half of the country. It's almost always with a decentralized VPN, if there's enough nodes, you're taking a shorter path to your destination, which is usually faster. However, data centers and servers and stuff like that almost always have better um, internet connections than residential connections because it's enterprise grade hardware so it's so theoretically you, know, half of you one. think it could be it could be in some instances Tor, but maybe not faster than like a normal vpn right and, and if you're routing your connection through somebody else's wi-fi it's not going to work very well mm. you know i think one of the reasons also too like that tor is pretty anonymous is that there are so many people using it. I mean, that was like the, one of the reasons it was created. And I guess one of the pitfalls also with decentralized VPNs is that having less people on it means it's not very anonymous at all. Like <laughs> if only yeah. the people are using it are the people who kind of created it, it's kind of pointless in a lot of ways. Right. Or if you have an entity like a government or a very powerful corporation that throws up a bunch of nodes, they can eventually get a huge chunk of the network space and de-anonymize everything because you're always a, connecting to them or one of their friends. I think that's a problem too with some of these, uh, you know, it could be a problem with some of these services in that like, I mean, it's not like the people who are making them are like super transparent and telling you who they are. Like, I mean, theoretically, it wouldn't be that hard for like some malicious actor or something to spin up one of these things and, you know, 
like you said, have it be kind of controlled by some spy agency or something potentially. <laughs> For sure. Uh, yeah. You know, and it's all about like what, you know, who you're trying to hide from. You know, if you're trying to hide from a government entity, um, you know, a VPN is a single target that they can request information from. They might not have the information because they don't keep any logs, but it's a single point of contact. Mm. When you have a decentralized VPN, there's multiple points of contact and they have to follow the chain longer to essentially get to you. Um, but if you're just trying to <clears throat> download Linux ISOs, each one can work fine. Yeah. <laughs> But if we're talking about like VPNs and decentralized, um, you know, one being more centralized is able to be attacked, you know, maybe easier than something that's decentralized. But you're saying like having bad actors is also something that, you know, could make the decentralized VPN theoretically, um, you know, less anonymous or, um, you know, I've heard of cases I've just been like doing some light research and people say like if you're using a decentralized VPN, um, like you're saying stuff like uh, if someone does something bad on the network, like you could get in trouble for it because it's like they're using your IP or something like that. Do you know like what, what they're talking about? Absolutely. When they're talking about that? Yeah, it, it depends on where you are, but the amount of trouble that you get in and, and where you're physically located and who your internet provider will all determine that. Um, if you have a residential connection, they're going to start getting copyright notices if someone's using your IP to, yeah. <laughs> you know, to avoid copyright detection well you're going to get the notices and your isp is just going to cut your cord the same way with um, Tor, right they like explicitly kind of don't they like explicitly kind of tell people not to like torrent with it uh yeah and they also block a lot of the uh protocols headers so what happens is when you try to run a lot of it through the network it'll just fizzle out and, and they know what mm. you're trying to do mm. so with tor, with tor or any you know decentralized vpn um when they contact you for abuse mm -hmm. if you're in the us um copyright problems are, are an issue because yeah. anybody can file some legal paperwork against you and you're responsible um civilly uh, criminally you can claim that it's you're you're running a, a decentralized node and then you're acting as a service provider and that's a legitimate defense especially in the tor project it's well known uh what laws to cite and and you can usually explain that and most people will accept that uh some people will run a little blurb on their node when you connect to it that will explain what it is but um if you're in other countries that are you know uh sent um censored a lot more like china or um israel or or any of the other like india places like that mm. uh a black van will come pick you up and that'll be the last <laughs> thing that'll ever happen to you hey that's happening in the united states right now well <laughs> at the no <laughs> yeah you, they're, they're, get picking, a, they're picking it, protesters up but, well, uh, yes but you'll yeah. get a trial eventually you yeah. know uh, um yeah i search you in the other countries, you won't get your day in court. You'll mm. just exist, the van will show up, and then no one will ever hear from you again. 